Hi everyone, I'm Carol Serby with the Amanika Spiritual Center. Welcome to this video. So what we want to talk about today is learning to discern your truth. So when you go and develop your intuition, one of the most common hurdles is distinguishing your voice of your truth. Truth is felt through self-awareness. A process of knowing what is right and what feels good to you. And you can do this quite naturally and quite effortlessly. What I'm trying to do here is to bring to you the conscious awareness so that you can move forward in your day and you can recognize it and use it as a catalyst to do more of something that feels like truth and less of something that feels like a lie. So if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and please consider subscribing. Beside the subscribe button is a little notification bell. Hit that bell and it will let you know every time I post a new video. Now why would it be important to know what truth feels like? Well, there's a lot of lies, a lot of fear, and a lot of conjuncture out there. And sometimes it's important to be able to discern the truth, even when you're not sure you've heard it. Or maybe your bullshit detector is going off, and you need to discern what lie is closer to the actual truth. You know what I mean? Sometimes people tell you a lie, and then other people tell you a similar lie. And, and you need to discern which one is closer to the truth. So how does this happen? How do we know truth? Which sometimes feels like good, bad, yes or no. And we feel it right in the body. To access this information, think of a time when you experienced a really great physical feeling. Maybe not that time, but a really great physical feeling. Something fantastic happened. Something that you wanted to be true came true. Um, something that was really exciting and good for you all the way around. So it doesn't matter so much what led up to the feeling, but rather just the feeling itself. And when you physically feel good, what does that feel like? Most people include the following. The essence of it is maybe tingly and warm. Maybe you feel relaxed or maybe you're crystal clear. Maybe it tickles a little or, or prickles or maybe you get the shivers of the goosebumps and it feels expansive. And your internal emotions might be something like love, feeling loved, feeling protected, having tenderness towards someone or something, a fondness, or feeling just easy and flexible, trusting and maybe even accomplished. So those are all the good feelings that we can correlate with truth. Now, when we culminate all of these words and um, correlating feelings together, where do you feel it? Some people feel it in the heart, or I feel it usually in my thighs. Some people feel it in their buttocks. The location is not the same for everybody. Your location is absolutely right for you. So let's look at deceit and lies. I'm sure we've all experienced this to a certain degree. And what did that feel like? Many people would say that the essence of deceit or the essence of being lied to includes the feeling of being punched in the stomach. You know, you get that real kind of gut, ugh. Or maybe it's a little bit higher. Maybe you feel like you could actually just throw up. Or maybe you just have to let your body go and you want to pick something up and throw it and break it and let it smash. Or maybe you just want to scream. The emotions that go along with that could be hatred and hurt, or maybe foolishness, darkness, fear, 
contempt, confusion even, or sometimes just the feeling of being stuck. Now, where do you feel those in the body? Many people feel it in their lower back, their tightening of the chest, or the clenching of the lower jaw, or sometimes just the twitching of the lower lip. Not everyone feels it the same. Where you feel it is just right for you. So be interesting to know where you feel these different sensations. If you could share in the comments below, and let's get an overall view of how people work differently. Now, what would be the value of knowing where you feel the truth, the goodness, and where you feel the lies and the deceit? Because sometimes we're sometimes we're put in a position where maybe we're faced with a decision. It has to be made quickly, has to be made immediately, has to be made now. And we are intuitive people. And it's our nature to trust. But when we know where we feel those, that feeling of deceit, that feeling of lies, we can maybe take a step back. We can maybe look at the situation from an overhead view. So knowing the ways in which your body speaks to you allows you to access your own innate ways of recognizing your own truth. What resonates with you? The other consideration is, like I was saying, just absolutely remove yourself from the results or answers you're expecting. And when you can see things objectively with minimal emotional tie-in, the residence of it will be felt immediately. What's going to help you to step out of those emotions? And I promise you this going to be the sensation of the lie or the deceit. You're more apt to step out, step above, create more awareness around it when you're feeling emotional deceit. If it's not feeling quite right, that's your cue. Step back. If it's not feeling quite right, where do you feel it in the body? Step back. Do more research, take more time to make the decision, whatever works for you. But when you feel that sense, that, uh, that, that spot in the body, that's your cue. That's your body speaking to you. That is your intuitive, innate, latent gifts speaking to you right there. Like how easy is that? You don't even have to ask. You don't even have to ask. All you have to do is pay attention. So when you're in these situations, to discern truth from lies. It helps to keep a clear mind. It helps to use the sensations you're feeling in the body. Because sometimes logic is just too logical for us. We are very natural, innate, intuitive, metaphysical beings. And sometimes doing things for the right reason as it looks on paper isn't necessarily the right reason for you. So know yourself. A sense of deep honesty with yourself if you're emotionally tied in. Wait for those emotions to settle before you take action. And know yourself. You know, some people might call it self-criticism, self-blame, self, 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 self. But knowing yourself, knowing your weaknesses, knowing your vulnerabilities is a good thing because when it comes to those moments, again, if you're being pressured to make a decision or you need to know if you're going to go left or right, to know your vulnerabilities gives you the opportunity to say, hey, you know what, that charity for animals, I am vulnerable when it comes to animals, maybe funding them for $100 a month isn't in my best interest, right? It has nothing to do with the money. It has nothing to do with the animals. It has everything to do with understanding 
where your soft spots are, where you're vulnerable. But it's important for us to know when we're making emotional decisions and when we're making logical decisions and be able to have that balance within the two. And you can't have that balance if you don't know the truth of it. So if, if you have identified a truth or a lie, take appropriate actions to follow through on your feelings. And if you would like to know more about how to work with your innate and latent abilities and what your body might be trying to communicate to you, I invite you to book a 30 minute clarity call with me. It's free. What have you got to lose? I'll make sure and put the link in below. And thank you for choosing to spend a few minutes of your day with me. I am absolutely grateful. And I look forward to seeing you on the next video. Bye-bye.